Hey guys, it's Green Deja, and in today's video, I will be reacting right to episode two of the Many Sides of Voice Actor Radio. So let's go ahead and get started in three, two, one, go. Yeah, that look good. Now, if that's also them singing the opening, too. And if you're a Bundity person, you already know immediately who you hear. Yeah, that is my stuff. cute though yeah and plus your mom wants to hear you the are all moms are like that all right two cent as I was trying to say moms like to cheer on their kids Well, that's because she supports you on it. We love a mom that supports their kid uh, on their dreams and such, yes.
You say that, but you secretly love that, though. See? <laughs> I mean, that would be saying, like, it's weird for seafood shops to sell seafood, and, and it's already cooked and everything. And, and they do that, so don't be surprised! Hell, my Publix literally, well, any Publix here in Florida will probably, like, literally, you know, Cook the seafood that you want, and you don't have to cook it at home. Probably to prove a point. Yeah, that was just a part of the gag and everything. Yeah, good, ain't it? <laughs> Right? You need something else with it. As You still can. Oh, and I wonder who that's all going to be.
so it made the most sense to put you. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, I get that, but still be excited. It's a really big role. I know it may seem like, you know, it's like screwing you over, but exactly. Look at it as like a step up. No matter where you were, that's a step up to where you actually really want to work. So, step up. Well, I love that one of us, you know, right? She's so pretty. Yeah, you look really tired. You look stressed out. Her outfit is so cute. <laughs> She's like next level.
Look how short she looks compared to the young Mandy. <laughs> That's so cute, though. Which we know, Avi. Uh-oh. Look how tired. No, 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 no. But you're exhausted. You've overworked yourself. I mean, that is a lot more pressure on them both, but it happens. You know they're going to be super disappointed, though. Oh, my God. Not the whole.
to all the Bandari fans who are watching, this is me. I, of course, you're gonna be fangirling just as much as I am. This was an interesting episode, though. I do feel bad for Otome because, I mean, I get it. She really wanted to make her fans proud at the end of the day. And, and I think that's pretty much like anybody in, you know, entertainment in a nutshell. We've talked about this, especially with Ojiro no Koi. Um, but at the same time, it's always about pacing yourself. Even as a fucking YouTuber, I have my days. I have my days. There, there, there are days where I am like... If I come home from work, I am dead ass tired, um, or I have like a really bad headache. Like as of now, it's different because I'm on vacation and I have like all this free time and such. But it was worse. Like okay, so on Sunday, I had to go somewhere, and I didn't go. I really didn't come home until about mm, let's say. Nine ten o'clock at night. So, normally, like, I would have done the video, got it out and stuff, but I was really extremely tired and such. So, I was just like, well, I'll do it tomorrow when I wake up. And that's what I did. But it's always about pacing yourself, making sure you get enough fucking sleep. Do not overwork yourself, but overwork yourself if you really have to. Just have a fucking limit. Yes. Don't do too much. That's like it's the biggest thing that um the funny thing is like with majority of my other YouTuber friends, especially with like anime reacting and stuff. So when I started, I was doing I did two. I did two in fall twenty sixteen. That was of course Magical Girl Raising Project and um, Keijo. And then after that, I think once that was over, I did um. Season one of Love Live Sunshine, because I had already binged um, OG Love Live and such with Muse and everything. And then I did like a couple other things at the time. I think by the time we got into winter, I was doing maybe about a good five or six. Typical now, like my limit is I, I try not to do like big, big, double, triple numbers and such. So my limit, I will always like say, okay, I'll do like nine or ten and such. And then if there is ones that are, like, interesting or looks interesting to me or if 9 out of 10, I might typically get a request from somebody um, or an at on Twitter saying, like, oh, hey, like, I want you to watch this. Like, there is one show. Um, I think it, it, it's called Windbreaker, and I think it comes out tomorrow and such. I do want to watch it. it. It is on my watch list, but with every other else things that I have to do, outside of YouTube and stuff, like, I, I I literally might have to say no with it just because I have so much. Like, I still have to watch Patreons, and then I still have to do videos on Dr. Stone, and that's why I'm, like, when I, sometimes when I say, this is my list, it's my list. Like, I can't do any more as much as I want to. I'm only doing the ones that are, like, the most anticipated. And then, like, sometimes, depending on if that one, because if we go back to last season, there was one that was, like, top tier most anticipated show and then i dropped it like week five or week six of it airing and i was like fuck it i'll just take a show and i did take on a show sometimes i end up doing that like if there was a show from the season that was not as good which i don't think there is because everything is good to me i'm just saying um 
then I would drop that show to watch Windbreaker. But as of right now, no. But I do love the fact that in the end, they, both of the girls, they saved the day. I get it where it's like, yes, let's just have Otome, like, literally do the talking portion, apologize to her fans, to the ones who were coming specifically for her, and let the other two just sing as a duo and such. Because that happens. You never really know in the world of entertainment and nutshell what the fuck is going to happen. I, I condemn her really, or, you know, I'm not going to say condemn. I'm, mm. I applaud her for doing what she had to do. I get it where it's just like, you have that, not, mm, I wouldn't say hustler mentality. It's more of like, this is a job. I have to get this done. Even when I am at like my worst end. And I, I get it to like producers and, you know, even it's the same thing how like when I was rewatching um, AMTM. Um, how they're like, oh, well, that makes you look like you can come whenever you're feeling really, really bad. So if you're feeling really sick, like, yeah, I know she's going to come and such. And it shows like, oh, you're, to your managers and it's like that, like, oh, well, I can depend on he, he or her for like everything. Because like for me, I remember one time where I was like deathly sick and I had missed work for like three or four days and I had to go. And my boss was like, oh, well, I know you feel bad, but I, I'm, I'm happy that you're here. And such. I get that. But I was definitely sick. I didn't want to get out of bed. But I'm here. Regardless. But she did what she had to do. Moral of the story. You just, you do, you have a limit. Set your limits, honey. And get enough sleep. Drink some water. Make sure you don't get bags in your eyes. Good enough sleep. Please and thank you. But other than that, guys, that is my reaction view towards episode two of the many sides of voice actor radio. If you guys enjoyed it, please give me a like. It really helps me out. Also, subscribe to my channel. Let me videos every single day. Join Master Squad. And of course, and I will see you guys officially all next Wednesday for episode two. But until then, I will see you guys all next time. Bye. Did I say episode two? I meant episode three. But I'll see you guys next time. Bye.